This is a Fox News alert on a show of defiance from Iran as it holds a massive military exercise. The drill coming just one day after President Trump slapped new sanctions on the country for a recent missile test. State media saying Tehran testing missile and radar systems as well as cyber warfare programs. Our John Huddy is live from our Middle East Bureau with more. John? Right, and there's great concern about this because, as you mentioned, it comes just a day after uh, the U.S. leveled those sanctions against Iran. And adding to just the overall concern, the rhetoric coming out of Iran's military, one Revolutionary Guard, Brigadier General Kelly, said that, uh, that quote, any misstep from Iran's enemies will result in its missiles roaring down on their heads. Clearly, tough talk aimed at the U.S. and, of course, President Trump. Now, as you mentioned, Kelly, today Iran's Revolutionary Guard's aerospace unit tested its missile and radar systems, cyber warfare systems, and command and control centers, again, a day after uh, the Trump administration imposed sanctions on Iran because of the ballistic missile test that was carried out on Sunday. And President Trump, as we know, tweeted Friday that Iran is playing with fire. Well, today, U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis uh, said that Iran's conduct will have to be addressed. U.S. officials have indicated that more actions could follow. Uh, we don't have specifics, so we're waiting on that. But the secretary also said that Iran is the single biggest state sponsor of terrorism in the world. Still, he said that despite the recent tension with Iran, he doesn't think it warrants an increase in the number of U.S. forces in the Middle East. And Iran's foreign minister, uh, Mohammad Javad Zarif, is trying to put a more diplomatic face on this, saying that his country will never initiate a war or use its weapons against anyone unless it's in self-defense. But other Iranian leaders are taking a more proactive tone. In fact, the senior Iranian cleric, uh, Ayatollah Khatami, told his followers yesterday, quote, our missile drills are a show of might. We are living in a world of wolves, wolves such as the arrogant government of America. And then his followers, thousands of them, Kelly, chanted in unison, death to America. Kelly. That's disturbing. John, thank you for that report. Welcome to Hannity, and tonight we're coming to you from the home of Super Bowl 51. We're in beautiful Houston. Hello, Houston. Houston, Texas. We have a full preview of Sunday's showdown between the Patriots and the Falcons. But first, President Donald Trump is showing the world that there is a new sheriff in town, and that is tonight's opening monologue. All right, so earlier today, in response to Iran conducting a ballistic missile test, the White House announced new sanctions against 13 individuals and 12 companies with ties to the rogue regime in Tehran. Now, the U.S. Navy is also placing the USS Cole off the coast of Yemen due to concerns over Iran supporting rebels in that country. President Trump also took to Twitter to issue a warning to the mullahs in Iran, writing, quote, Iran is playing with fire. They don't appreciate how kind President Obama was to them, not me. Also tonight, France is on edge after an attempted terrorist attack at a shopping mall beneath a museum in Paris. And according to authorities, a machete-wielding man shouting Allahu Akbar attacked French soldiers before being shot five times. The French president, Francois Hollande, says there is, quote, no doubt it was an act of terror. And President Trump reacted by tweeting out, quote, a new radical Islamic terrorist has just attacked a museum in Paris. Tourists were locked down in France is on edge yet again. Get smart, USA. And unlike his predecessor, President Barack Obama, President Trump is making it very clear that he's not going to tolerate Iranian aggression and that he'll be a lot more tougher when it comes to fighting and defeating radical Islam. Now, the days of all talk, no action, is over. The time for action is here. Pope Francis's intervention in the Knights of Malta order caused more conservative criticism with posters appearing around Rome citing his action against conservative Catholics and asking, where's your mercy? On the same day that Pope Francis named a top Vatican archbishop to be his special delegates to the Knights of Malta, the posters began appearing. Dozens of posters were seen around Rome, featuring a stern-looking Pope Francis. The posters decry his decapitation of the Knights, along with other measures Francis has taken against conservative, tradition-minded groups. Iran does away with the dollar. The country will no longer use the U.S. dollar for its financial and foreign exchange reports, according to local media. The head of Iran's central bank first made the announcement during a late January TV interview. 
He says the dollar will officially be ditched in March. Iran and the United States are virtually non-existent trade partners, but the announcement comes amid rising tensions between the two nations. On January 27th, President Trump signed an executive order that imposed a temporary travel ban on seven Muslim-majority countries, including Iran. Iran tested a ballistic missile several days later, setting off a war of words between Washington and Tehran. Trump said Iran was, quote, put on notice. An Iranian official dismissed Trump's words as, quote, baseless ranting. On February 3rd, the Trump administration imposed sanctions on people and businesses linked to Iran's missile program. For Newsbeat Social, I'm Matt Paul. The Nigerian army kills six Boko Haram insurgents in the country's northeast state of Boro. The Nigerian army said February 2nd, three soldiers also died during the battle with the terror group. The army recovered, among other things, about a dozen guns and two rocket-propelled grenade bombs. Boko Haram has killed more than 20,000 people in the region and displaced more than 2 million others since 2009. The Nigerian army has made large gains against Boko Haram over the past few months. In January, it cleared Boko Haram fighters from the group's largest training camp. Although Boko Haram is much weaker now than it was, the group is still consistently carrying out attacks in the region. On Saturday, January 28th, as many as 24 people were killed when a convoy of civilian buses and trucks was ambushed. Then on Tuesday, February 1st, Boko Haram gunmen ambushed police vehicles, killing an officer. For Newsbeat Social, I'm Matt Paul. Holy robotics, Batman! There's now a bat drone. A team of three roboticists from the University of Illinois and Caltech have created a drone named BatBot that mimics the flight of a bat. The team's research was published in Science Robotics on February 1st. A regular bat has 40 active or passive joints, but BatBot is made of carbon fiber bones and has nine 3D printed ball and socket joints, which are covered by a silicone membrane. That membrane helps the bat robot flap its wings for better aerial maneuvers and gives it the ability to glide to save energy. According to the Associated Press, study co-author Seth Hutchinson believes that BatBot could be used to go inside damaged buildings like the Fukushima nuclear plant. Researchers are still improving BatBot, and they'll need to get permission from the federal agencies before flying the drone in public. For Newsbeat Social, I'm Matt Paul. Scientists are worried and planning to take action against the Trump administration's strict restrictions on immigration, declarations about climate change, and their pledge to repeal the Affordable Care Act. They're banding together in a march on Washington and other cities on April 22nd, Earth Day, to stand together to help researchers stranded by Trump's executive order on immigration. The march is meant to echo the January 21st women's marches that attracted more than a million women around the world, as well as bring awareness about climate change and international diversity in the science community. Seattle Judge James L. Robart blocks Donald Trump's executive order on immigration, earning derision from the president. Robart is known for his conservative legal views, for declaring Black Lives Matter during a hearing on police reform in 2015, and for a record of helping disadvantaged children. Robart was appointed in 2004 by George W. Bush after a 30-year career in private practice. On Friday, Robart temporarily overturned Trump's ban on travel to the U.S. from seven primarily Muslim nations. Washington state sued to block the order, saying it's unconstitutional and would harm residents. Robart held the state was correct. China warned the U.S. on Saturday against destabilizing East Asia after its new defense secretary James Mattis said Washington would rush to defend Japan in case of a conflict with Beijing. We urge the U.S. side to take a responsible attitude, stop making wrong remarks, and avoid making the issue more complicated and bringing instability to the regional situation. By choosing to come to South Korea first, Secretary Mattis's message is clear. America first does not mean backing out of East Asia. And on the top of his agenda here is the rising threat from North Korea. Secretary Mattis's first offering of assurance to South Korean leaders was an extended hand. A stalwart ally, South Korea is now uncertain about its standing with America.
한반도 긴장 상황을 더욱 고조시키고 있습니다. 만약 북한이 우리의 엄중한 경고를 무시하고 적반하장격의 억지 주장과 무분별한 경고망동을 지속한다면 우리 군의 단호하고 강력한 응징에 직면하게 될 것입니다. There is a palpable sense of uncertainty here. Defense Secretary Mattis's job number one is to let South Koreans know uh, who they're dealing with. Mattis is expected to focus talks on containing an increasingly aggressive North Korea. The country's capabilities keep growing. Kim Jong-un recently warned they'll soon be ready to test launch a long-range missile capable of hitting the U.S. Recent Iranian actions involving a provocative ballistic missile launch and an attack against a Saudi naval vessel conducted by Iran-supported Houthi militants underscore what should have been clear to the international community all along about Iran's destabilizing behavior across the entire Middle East. The recent ballistic missile launch is also in defiance of UN Security Council Resolution 2231, which calls upon Iran not to undertake any activity related to ballistic missiles designed to be capable of delivering nuclear weapons, including launches using such ballistic missile technology. These are just the latest of a series of incidents in the past six months in, in which Houthi forces that Iran has trained and armed have struck Emirati and Saudi vessels and threatened United States and allied vessels transiting the Red Sea. In these and other similar activities, Iran continues to threaten U.S. friends and allies in the region. The Obama administration failed to respond adequately to Tehran's malign actions, including weapons transfers, support for terrorism, and other violations of international norms. The Trump administration condemns such actions by Iran that undermine security, prosperity, and stability throughout and beyond the Middle East, and place, which places American lives at risk. President Trump has severely criticized the various agreements reached between Iran and the Obama administration, as well as the United Nations, as being weak and ineffective. Instead of being thankful to the United States in these agreements, Iran is now feeling emboldened. As of today, we are officially putting Iran on notice. Because we will never repeat, never, and get the same statement from those who are complaining. Never use them against anybody, unless in self-defense. And we're sure that nobody has the guts again to attack us. There's been a lot of fighting. We have no heat or electricity. My husband brought us here, but he's gone back. Eastern Ukraine, of course, is not the only part of the country suffering because of Russia's aggressive actions. The United States continue, continues to condemn and call for an immediate end to the Russian occupation of Crimea. Crimea is a part of Ukraine. Our Crimea-related sanctions will remain in place until Russia returns control over the peninsula to Ukraine. This is the Amona outpost, illegal under international and Israeli law. It's now subject to an Israeli court-ordered evacuation. Settlers from Amona are likely to be moved to other Palestinian land in the occupied West Bank. But what has really drawn Palestinian anger is not Amona. Israel announced on Wednesday that 3,000 new settler homes are to be built. That's on top of the 3,000 announced last week. When do you see the United Nations solving problems? They don't. They cause problems. So if it lives up to the potential, it's a great thing. And if it doesn't, it's a waste of time and money. A thinly veiled threat from then president elect Donald Trump has gained traction. Since taking office, the president has drafted an executive order to slash America's UN funding by at least 40%. There are clearly are a lot of voices around Trump saying, let's cut US involvement. Let's be nasty to the UN almost on principle and let's pay a lot less for what the UN does. 
While that has rattled nerves in and around UN headquarters in New York, the official response is a cautious one. Sometimes we talk too much about things that have not happened, and when you talk too much about things that have not happened, you trigger the happening of those things. So one thing you can be absolutely sure is that I will not be making comments on possibilities to enhance the post possibilities to possibly be a reality. But the concerns are very real. As it stands, the U.S. provides the largest amount of money to the U.N., more than one-fifth of its regular and peacekeeping budgets, plus voluntary contributions to multiple U.N. agencies, all amounting to billions of dollars. If they suddenly bring this down, children are going to starve. If they cut down on the World Health Organization, pandemics will creep around the world. Counterterrorism, peacekeeping operations and climate change initiatives could take major hits as well. But there would also be political consequences. Many UN observers agree that without a US fully on board here, the UN may lose both capacity and credibility. But some experts also say that without US leadership here, there would be a void that other countries could fill. And eyes are on China. The fires have raged on for about two weeks now and have claimed the lives of 11 people while displacing and leaving over 6,000 without a home. The president made the address from her headquarters saying that no new significant outbreaks were reported and that the rest of the fires are mostly under control. She added that the deputy minister of public works will lead the reconstruction process.